Um, I think it gives me great pleasure this morning to be here to provide this keynote address at this uh, prestigious symposium. And I think uh, from what has been said already, I think, Prof, for me, it's really a momentous occasion where researchers from different disciplines get to gather with students from, uh, from different disciplines to really have a conversation, to have a pause and say, you know, what have we been researching on um, and where to from there? I think it's really very important. Um, and this really speaks to the keynote. Okay, thanks. It really speaks to the keynote where we are saying that we really have to now start looking at secular and transformative approaches in achieving our national goals. Um, historically, you would have the water people, in fact, water quality people doing work by themselves, speaking to themselves. You'd have the hydrologist doing work by themselves, speaking to themselves. You'd have the chemists doing work by themselves and speaking to, it, to themselves. And I think over time and now going forward, we have realized that it is very critical that we talk to each other. We find um, key meaning into what others are doing. And we say to one another, where to from here? Where can I contribute? Our discussion and, and keynote is really centered around water. That's, that's my specialty, but uh, more so around the fact that every single day you open the television, you listen to the news in South Africa, there's challenges around water. And I always also reflect and say, most people that are complaining around water issues, drinking water, our source of supply has been stopped, we don't get water all the time, we're really forgetting that there's even more people in South Africa who have never had that opportunity, who have never really been saved, who don't know what you're talking about when you're saying drinking water, because to them water is water, it's what's available. Um, whichever way, and obviously that becomes very much important. And I think lastly is to also talk to the issue around research and research as a career. I think it's so important that you bring students to these platforms, as we've said, um, Prof, that you know this is part of training. We know that research is actually a, a dying career because we are in the business as universities of graduating students who come in and go out, and the questions of the future need to be responded to. Um, researchers are old and um, retiring, and how do we then build that capacity and duplicate ourselves and our knowledge and make sure that the future is not left um, unattended? And research is very key, I think, um, to respond to challenges, um, to respond to the challenges of the country, uh, of the continent, as well as globally. So um, my talk starts with an overview of the water resources in South Africa. We all know we are a water-scarce country, um, ranking 30th driest country in the world because of our uneven distribution of, rain, of rainfall, but also that we are receiving below 500 millimeters, which is less than the average, the global average of about 850. And that we, unfortunately though, still use, with all of this, we still use about 61% more than the world average. And when we're talking water, most of us really talk to rainfall, talk to the rivers, and then people talk about dams and taps, but there's also groundwater which is a resource and which is, has largely not been very well developed. And we acknowledge that um, we need to be looking at the use of the resource holistically and sustainably so. It's not everywhere where we must always develop surface water, but in other areas we should be able to use uh, surface and and groundwater resources. And in terms of our challenges, continuing 98% um, of our freshwater resources are already allocated. And allocated does not necessarily mean they are being utilized. And when they are utilized, does not mean they are being sustainably utilized. 
So we always argue, or I personally argue that that should not be a big thing to concern ourselves about. Because if we were to be given just one liter and all of us here today had to share it, we would have to make the right decisions. We wouldn't just take it and just drink it. We would count how many of us are here, what would be the percentage that each one must get. If it's a drop, we'll each get a drop. And that is what South Africans and South African needs to be concerning ourselves about. We also understand that um, the National Development Plan 20 and uh, Vision 2030 said that um, water, I mean, food security is very important and agriculture as a sector is one of our growing sectors of the economy that needs to be kept going. And for that to, re to reach the target set for 2030, we really have to grow um, our irrigated area by 45,000 hectares. And the question is, where is the water going to come from? And we also know that um, climate change has now also put a spin to the whole complexity. So it's highly unlikely that we're going to resolve these problems just looking at one direction, one discipline, and trying to say, this is how I'm looking at quality and this is how we improve. You can't improve quality if you don't know what's your quantity. And the measures that you want to put in place have to ensure that you are addressing all these issues. And so we know that uh, in terms of our population growth, um, South Africa's water demand is going to outstrip supply by 17% um, in 2030. And the recent census, um, unfortunately, have actually indicated that that 17% may actually be more than what we calculated because we had anticipated a population growth of about up to 55 million by 2030. And I think recently we have reached, we have surpassed uh, 55 million. So the models and the calculations also need to be reconsidered. And we also know that um, agriculture accounts for 60% of the available freshwater resources, and irrigation expansion would only compound the existing pressure, because no matter what the challenges of the world are at any given day, people will still have to eat. And uh, we also have got our national challenges that have, uh, we've seen here in this province, including our droughts, our floods, uh, population growth, urbanization, improving the living standards of people, and as well as making sure that there's a balance between the availability of water, energy, and food. And the Water Research Commission had gone in the last 10 years, gone out to prepare what we call the Water RDI Roadmap, where in stakeholders from the water sector got together and crafted a roadmap in terms of what needs to be done by 2030. And so the research is there, the information is there, the activities are there, the targets are there, but the implementation is where the challenge mainly lies. So in terms of the affected sectors, we know that water, energy, and food are the compounding factors. Um, on my right-hand side, you've got what I think all of us know. That was the part of the diagnostics where we said South Africa is has got high poverty and inequality, and these are some of the contributing factors. But we also know that 50% uh, of our population is food insecure. That needs to be addressed. 85% of our country comes from fossil, from fossil fuel, and we need to be able to address that. But also that 98% of our resources are already allocated, and there is also the threat of novel infections. COVID was named as but one of them. Therefore, we need to be able to understand these drivers of change and focus our research areas around um, these, these aspects. So we would definitely have to have an integrated approach where we understand our drivers of change, which are mainly our environmental changes as well as our so socioeconomic changes. And then we need to be able to understand what is the risk and exposure and uh, to ensure that we have a proper environmental welfare as well as social welfare. So we have to understand our vulnerabilities and resilience assessments. We have to understand our socioeconomic feedbacks, environmental feedbacks, as well as our risk exposure. But we also have to have a nexus planning approach. We can't just talk to water by itself. We need to be integrating at even more higher level. 
and also ensure that we have got sustainable food systems, particularly we have to have available food, we have to have access to this food, and we have to have sustainable food utilization. And are we prepared to respond to these weather extremes that we have also talked about? We know that climate change impacts are best addressed through integrated and transformative approaches, which therefore necessitate interdisciplinary and cross-sectoral approaches. Our sectoral and linear approaches have worked up to thus far, but they limit and provide challenges to adaptation and resilience. And therefore, our cross-sectoral and circular approaches are what is envisaged to provide the integrated pathways towards adaptation and resilience. And therefore, we have to have an approach around innovative climate smart and resilient practices where we understand climate smart agriculture, we have to reduce greenhouse gases, we have to conserve uh, forest cover to provide the much needed oxygen, and for the trees and the uh, forest cover to take up the carbon dioxide. We have to have resource use efficiency practices and innovative water management practices. So what is the challenge for research in building this water resilience? Um, we have to have water climate proofing, and uh, in short, you can also look at it as early warning systems, preparedness, responses. And we have to understand how we assess the resilience of water management and water services to cope with climate change. We have to understand our challenges. We have to understand the scenarios and prepare forecasts. What would the future look like? We have to understand our uncertainties and assumptions that we make. For example, we have spoken about population growth, which we know that in planning for the next 10, I mean, for up to 2030, it's out because now the new census have indicated that we are more than what we thought we'd be. We have to assess the risks, assess cost effectiveness and coping mechanisms, and have smart and climate resilience water management uh, particularly where we have the strongest El Nino forecast for the year 2023. And in developing these pathways towards climate change and adaptation, understanding our drivers of change, vulnerabilities and exposures, preparing an excess planning, we have to be prepared. And in, 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 in turn, our response and recovery has to be sound. It has to be one that integrates water, around sanitation and recycling food, around healthy diet or healthy nutrition and improved immune. It has to be one that responds to sustainable energy where we have to move towards clean energy, uh, decomposers, as well as food webs. And in our nexus planning, the outcome should be able to ensure that we suppress, we suppress uh, transmissions, we enhance immunity, we eliminate pathogens, ecosystems flows, and we understand our ecosystem services, as well as to access our natural capital. What are the fundamental requirements, therefore, for providing this water and sanitation nexus approach? We need a healthy workforce. We need adequate numbers of skilled human resources and decent working conditions. We need empowerment and inform information in order to be able to respond to these challenges. And I think all of you in this room fit into that category. But also we have to ensure that water sanitation, hygiene, and healthcare waste management is at the center of everything we are doing so that we have sustainable and safe management of water, sanitation, and healthcare. We have to have sustainable water, I mean, energy services as well as infrastructure technologies and products. And I think that is where also research needs to play a much uh, critical role. Uh, we really are very good at assessing and diagnosing problems, but we are at pains to really come up with the correct infrastructure technologies and products that we can use in South Africa. In fact, all government departments uh, which is the message I always uh, preach when I'm out there, is that we are always too ready to buy something from out there when we are actually producing the same things in the country, but we don't trust what we have. And I think we need to uh, make sure that the research voice is really uh, much more louder and it can be heard. I know that with researchers, we want to publish in journals, we want to contribute to... Uh, 
uh, textbooks and all of that, but we really have to also be able to take the research messages, outcomes, impact, and take it out into the public domain. And therein we'll be able to create the pool and make sure that people demand that our state and government departments utilize all that is coming out of the hard work that all of us in here are doing. The approach of circularities is an alternative towards uh, water sustainability uh, by 2030 in that we will, uh, we have all, always focused on sector-based resource planning and management, divergent sector-based policies, aggravate contemporary crisis, and focused on the present situation. In terms of secular and polycentric approaches, we're saying we need to have a cross-sectoral uh, resource planning and management approach. We need to interact with the present, but most importantly, mirror into the future. We need to plan for the future. We have to ex expedite the resilience of building initiatives, and we also have to create a balanced system through the use of smart technologies. And we believe that transformative approaches will seek, which seek to build resilience and adaptation through scenario planning will achieve that secular economy. Our research development and research outputs at the Water Research Commission is that we want to enable access to research outputs and water information. We have to package it in a smart way that is understandable. I keep telling uh, my team at work, and I hope that also that's something to be considered here, Prof, is that the world is now audiovisual, right? People don't want to read. People want to see, they want to hear, and we need to also adapt ourselves in how we present this information so that it, people can be able to access it. We also want to be the knowledge premier hub, and we are seeing that a lot more government departments and municipalities and uh, the public sector are coming to the Water Research Commission for, for important information. We are also building an innovation and business development as well as ensuring that on an international engagement and stakeholders, we are building partnerships that are sound and we keep South Africa on the map. Our outcomes and impact area says that we have to use the available time to ensure that there's resilience and adaptation. We have to contribute towards economic growth, jobs and livelihoods. We need to diversify our water sources and practice better water use and protection so that there can be water security and we have to reduce environmental impact. And we need forecasting and predictions to be able to get these outcomes. We need quality and quantity management tools, strong, viable, and informed institutions, new sources and exploitational tools. We need stewardship. Most importantly, we need data and information for decision-making purposes. And then I was also requested to respond to a number of questions in terms of the needs of the symposium and what are our new themes and focus areas in line with the new WRC strategy. We are looking at water availability, water quality and health, water use, as well as knowledge dissemination and advisory services. And I think this also gets to be seen that we are taking this uh, integrated approach. And how are we, um, why are we in this dire situation? And I think we've all have got our answers, but mainly it's the poor management of water available uh, to the country. It's about the skills and the capacity and decision making. We have got a lot of people that are in positions, but they're waiting for somebody to say, do this, do that. And we are not in a space where we are taking the right decision. But also we have to deal with the issues around infrastructure aging and the high cost thereof. And for me, that's critical because if we are still going to focus on infrastructure the way we used to do it in the past, we are not going to be able to meet these targets by 2030. It's costing more, it requires much more. How can we be thinking around new media, new kind of infrastructure that we need to bring in, such as non sewage sanitation, we were told to call it flushing non sewage sanitation, where we don't use so much water to move waste, but we use water purposefully. In terms of what direction is the WRC going to enhance water research in South Africa, we are focused on stakeholder-centric strategic approaches. So we are going out, finding out what are the needs of our stakeholders as the Water Research Commission. We are going to craft our research agenda to respond to that. And in particular, we are receiving funding from the levy. So 
much as we also have to contribute towards research and development for graduating students, we need to be highly responsive to the challenges of the country. If we don't do that, I think we are failing in our mandate. We want to build the capacity and skills of our researchers. And we have, in the recent call, actually made available money for students themselves to actually access grants from the Water Research Commission for their own research so that when they graduate, we can take them abroad and anywhere else for postdoc training. And when they come back, we will fund them to do research and bring others up so that we are actually multiplying and making that we are concretizing this whole capacity building and, and, and uh, development of skills. We don't just pay lip service to it, uh, that you finish your project and then you must see to finish. We are saying we need you, we need your skills, and we need to build for the future. We are also rebuilding our organizational systems, and we want to have a sustainable water research commission. The examples provided in positive impact the WRC is making, I think there's numerous, including all of the work that you are doing through the grants and uh, that have been funded by the Water Research Commission. But in particular, we want to also touch communities. We have communities that have not been served with water, that have made do, and they are not dead. But what we want to do is to bring new things, new innovations, and go and tell them, use this. And you bring them the tap, and they bypass the tap, and they still go to the river, because they have had their indigenous ways. How do we tap into that, and understand that, and enhance that, and put science to it so that it can uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, respond to the targets that we have? We also are wanting to showcase regulation of water use per crops. How do we ensure that? we standardize the use of water in agriculture, in crop establishment and in crop uh, production. Um, we find that uh, people have always farmed. My great-grandfather used to irrigate at 12 midday. My grandfather, my father, and that's how I'm going to do it. How do we change that? And how do we scientifically provide information that will make uh, the farmers buy into our solutions that are coming up with? We have talked, and I think, Prof, you spoke about the chemicals of emerging concerns and how these have to be managed. And not only how we must document how much of them there are, it's about then what systems um, as well as infrastructure do we need to put in place to ensure that we are dealing effectively with this. We also have uh, non sewage sanitation, which I spoke about when we were saying we should be able to experience sanitation or a toilet the same way whether you are in rural South Africa or, you, or whether you are in Sentin. And for that, we should be able to think out of the box. And I think a lot of work has been done even at UKZN contributing to this uh, non sewer sanitation. And the future of the Water Research Commission is that we want to develop water research, com uh, research development and innovation products that can be promoted to create a pool. And we want to also pilot and demonstrate these globally and create a futuristic and water and sanitation economy. Uh, with those few, I want to thank you very much for the invitation and I'm hoping that I've sparked interest and uh, your thinking and we wish all the students well in terms of all the work that they would be showcasing and we're hoping that students, you are not doing research just to graduate and go and work. Research in itself is work. It's very key work and we need you for the future. Thank you very much.